I recently attended a course by Frank Zastro, who trained under Dr. Corey uh, with Corey Plate Technique, which is taking a thin shallow cortical plate and repositioning it elsewhere to gain gain vital bone. Um, so Dr. Zastro uh, founded the Bone Builders Academy. He's active on Facebook, Instagram, the real real bone builders. Um, so I'm gonna go over his technique a little bit. Um, he takes a thin shell from the external oblique angle, which is right the lateral aspect, basically where the third molar would sit, um, splits that little shell off, and then sections it into a couple of thin slices, like this, scrapes it to get a little bit of uh, some bone flakes, and then he'll take that and he'll uh, fix it with a couple titanium screws to augment a thin ridge and also get some pretty impressive vertical as well as horizontal gains. So I'm going to just review that technique with you and we'll do a simulated surgery here on the model. So I have this model of the mandible and as you all know we have the IA that runs, enters here, runs through the body of the mandible and the exits of the mental foramen. So we're going to draw that on there more or less. Kind of running right through there. Um, so his safety considerations are back here in the ramus is pretty thin and obviously you risk running into the IA, which would be a big deal. So he stays away from that. He stays up here in this, this thick portion here, which is a external oblique line right here, this eminence. So his guidelines are you'll, you go medial to just an extension of the coronary process in the ramus. Stay medial to there, and depending on how much bone you're harvesting, you'll go parallel to that with your second cut. And then it's just a, you're taking just a cortical plate here. It's about a two millimeter split here. And you'll just connect the dots down here and tie that together. Now the, the danger zone, of course, is sitting right here where that nerve will be running underneath there. So in these portions, it's really important to go a maximum of two millimeters. So you're not gonna be encroaching, potentially uh, cutting into the nerve. Dr. Zastra uses a micro saw. Um, I'm not really familiar with that as much and I don't have one. So the other way to do it is to use a piezo. That's the way that, that we'll do it here today. All right, so we'll start here with our ridge split cut right here down the, the ridge and with the piezo you know you want to keep it constantly moving obviously got the the water off and make a mess here on my desk but this uh ridge split you'll take a, a little bit deeper you can take it uh you know 10 millimeters or so down because you're gonna be well away from the the ia now he was saying it was safe enough that you don't need to necessarily have a CT, but there's no way I would personally feel comfortable doing it without one and knowing exactly where I'm at. So that guy first. Got that opened up pretty nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my right angle tip now so I can, I mean, I could use this to make all the cuts, but of course, you wouldn't really be able to do that in the mouth, so I'm going to try to keep it as realistic as, as possible. All right, here's my off angle. So obviously, if you're coming in from the front of the mouth, you'll have access to get get at those. So go ahead and make that make these cuts. And up towards the top here, you can come completely to connect that line. But as you get down to where you might be in the, the danger zone of the IA, that's where you want to go no more than two millimeters deep. Now, that's one reason I do like the piezo is if you do have a bad day, you're less likely to cause any permanent damage there than if you're using a carbide or a micro saw or something else like that. 
go ahead and connect those. All right, we got those dots connected, and then I'm going to switch to my other angle here to get that last um, cut there on the the more apical portion. Okay, we'll go ahead and make the last apical cut here. And again, back here by the IA, you want to go nice and shallow. So this one all the way across, he wants to keep it about two millimeters. Then you just take a chisel and a couple taps if you need it. That should pop right off. So there you have it. That leaves you with this little sliver, which actually take and section into two pieces if you'd like to uh, have twice twice as much material and then this will be fixed with bone screws wherever you're trying to fill it in the other thing you could take a uh, safe scraper actually come the back of that and scrape away any of that medullary bone those little flakes and these come in like this kind of in a disposable and you take all the natural bone there and pack that in between all right so we're going to go ahead and fixate our plate now. Got the uh, off thin piece here that we're going to do a simulated graft in the anterior portion here. Um, generally when I'm block grafting I really like to use Tatum surgical kit because it comes with uh, the easy fixation because it comes with a uh, square drive. So you just grab the screw and it stays put really well. Um, the problem with these, with this technique, is it doesn't have the threads all the way up to the, the head of the screw, which is important in stabilizing the, the plate. So we won't be able to use that. So I have these other screws here that do have the threads all the way, all the way up to the head. And those are just a uh, normal uh, Phillips style drive. So before we fix it with the screws, we're going to make some pilot holes. So you'll hold the, the plate right where um, it needs to go and drill through both plates at the same time. And talking to Frank, he said 90% of the time he uses a 8 millimeter long screw. So once you have the first hole done, and you want to do them one at a time to make sure that everything's lining up properly. So after you have the first one started, you'll go ahead and thread it in to whatever gap you want to have between the plate and the bone, usually a couple couple millimeters. So about there, that was about halfway in. At this point I'll locate it on my mandible second hole here, make sure everything's lining up how I want it to. And then you can just go ahead and finish it on in. And most of the time you're going to want at least two screws. I've got my second Second one there. So now that that first one's fixated in place, we'll come back, do the exact same thing again here. Except now it's a little easier. We've got 
with the benefit of it being held in place. And again, grabbing another little thick screw. You can see these, these don't, this is the reason I like the uh, Tatum kit. See, that doesn't want to stay put. So you're actually going to have to start it and then pick it up from there and finish. So there you have it. And from there, you recommend you smooth off any rough corners that could um, expose and you'll take these flakes that you got earlier and just pack them into the, the defect here so you can kind of imagine and that's pretty much the technique <laughs>